Welcome, welcome guys. So we're going to show y'all today is something that we're going to be talking about of how to assign your creative deals over to still make a profit if you are, um, if you want to wholesale this deal to get out of it. So, so we're definitely going to show y'all how to assign it, what documentation to use. And then we also going to show you guys the step-by-step -step process. I'm going to my guy, um, Gene, to, uh, to definitely come on in here from the Go-Getter family. I'm Lonzi Rutter from the Champion Real Estate Institute. Oh, there go my guy right there. <clears throat> Gary, what's going on? What's going on, Gary? Um, it's definitely, man, it's definitely a definitely a, a pleasure to be on here. To definitely share to y'all on these Saturdays. I'm just waiting on my guy to come on, roll on in here with me. There you go. They go to the hour right there. Hey. <laughs> what's up, bro? Man, just so, chilling, man, just chilling. Got to go pick up these uh monthly payments today, man. man. Hey, mine on the twenty eighth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Most of it. laughs> yep, yep, man. How you feeling? Man, it's uh, it's been a, it's been a busy week, man. It's been a okay. week, but but it's been a, it's been a yeah. good week, you know. Staying busy, staying busy is good. That's a good thing, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. staying busy is always is it's always good, man. Always good to be out there beating that pavement. Yeah, that's, oh. a, that's the thing. We got to be out here taking action, man. If you're not busy, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> it's <laughs> us because we can help out. Like, yeah, yeah for real. If you got idle hands and you're looking for something to do, we can teach you how to get that financial freedom, too, with the yeah. idle hands. So, yeah. yeah definitely. Most definitely, man. Uh, yeah, so again, like I said uh, a little bit earlier, so we're going to talk about the assignment. Um, like the assignment fees, um, what contracts you use as the assignment fees, and how do you walk through that process and what that process look like. So I'm Lonzy Rowder here with the Champion Real Estate Institute, and I got my guy, Gene, here, man, and he with the Go-Getter family. So I want you all to go ahead and drop some comments in the, um, in the, um, in, in the comment section, um, definitely below, to see what we can do to help you guys. Um, if you got a, guys got any questions, go ahead and drop that down below. Like and share this video because you never know who you might impact on this video, who might they walk walk past to see this video and might want to um, definitely reach out to us, man. So I'm going to let Jen go ahead and open up the floor for us tonight, man. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, it's good to be here on this beautiful Saturday. And I appreciate y'all uh, taking the time out to, to watch us. Hopefully we bring you some value today. So today we want to talk about um, assignments. All right. Yeah. Now, an assignment. Uh, wholesalers do assign. That's what wholesalers do. You know, they yeah. the, a wholesaler will get a property under contract and then they assign that contract. Okay. Yeah. Now, I do a little bit of wholesaling personally. Um, uh -huh. Just yeah, it just depends on the. It just depends really on the property itself. Um, but it is important that we always have an assignment clause in our contract. Always, always, yes. always. always, right? Because <laughs> it just leaves that option open for us, you know. Yeah. And and you can uh you can assign a contract at any time throughout, you know. So even um even with uh when you buy a house subject to, you know, when we take over the mortgage, um you're if you're you know, you're halfway through it, you're two years into it. And yeah. uh you, you yeah, you decide, <laughs> hey, you know, it's time. Uh yeah. and and you put that fee on there too. Now yeah. with me what I do is in my in my purchase and sales agreement, I have my assignment clause in there. But yeah. I also have I also have an a uh, separate assignment letter that I have. So I use that I use that when I actually do the assignment. You know what I mean? So yeah. so yeah, this is this is what this is what will um complete that assignment. That'll yeah. complete the assignment uh so that everybody is on the same page and knows what's going on. And let me say this real quick. I talked to a lot of wholesalers. Matter of fact, Lonzi had just put up a picture in his Instagram, man. He was like, hey, a wholesaler uh, sent me a property and uh, it does not match my, my parameters. So, yeah. but um, I get this a lot, man, with, with wholesalers. Um, they, they, don't, they don't tell the truth. And when I say that, yeah, when I say that, I don't mean it like in a bad way, although there are some bad ones, but yeah. it's, it's as if they're scared to say, uh, yeah, I'm brokering this deal. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm brokering. I'm bringing. I'm bringing us. I've got a seller, and then I'm bringing a buyer together. So yeah. I'm assigning this contract. They, it's, it's like they're scared to say it. And that uh, I've got a wholesaler now, man. That he'll bring me people, and they ask me like, "Oh, you're you're working with Corey? Uh, Corey, you you and Corey are partners?" I'm like, "No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. we're not partners. I don't know why he just won't tell the truth." So, so if you're wholesaling, 
right now and you're watching this, just be honest. Just be That's honest. It. Yeah, because people are happy that you're bringing them together. You know, it's hard sometimes to find a seller or to find a buyer. So when you're yeah. that person in the middle, man, they're happy to, uh, to see you, you know? Definitely, most definitely. And like, <clears throat> um, just like just this following, just this last past week, I literally got two two phone calls from two different hosts, right? Mm -hmm. They know I do creative finances. So, so they didn't have these properties locked up for probably about a month, a month and a half trying to wholesale the deal. And they give me a yeah, <laughs> and they give me a call like, um, hey, could you help us out on this deal? I said, okay, give me some more information. I can definitely help you out. So one wholesaler, um, he's trying to now trying to convert the wholesale deal over to a subject two deal. He don't have all of the paperwork. Yeah, but, but he don't want to pay me what I want to come in and and uh and, uh, and close out the deal. I said I close out the deal for you. Yeah, uh, but he don't want to pay me what I'm what what i asked them to pay me yeah so i had to let that one walk and then another one it was a um a wholesaler he he tried to he tried to wholesale me the deal as a creative deal because mm -hmm. he couldn't put the deal out so i'm like okay cool yeah I, I yeah i take it if i'm going to um care i mean if they wouldn't for me to carry a note but of course they wanted forty thousand dollars. So I said no, and the market value is only seventy two. I'm like, I'm not giving you forty grand on this property. So, um, so he released the contract, then uh -huh. broke the contract again, uh, and trying to get and trying to do a subject two deal on the property where now he's only gonna put up twenty grand to have him to walk away, mm -hmm. but he want to wholesale the deal off to another investor who's gonna carry the note. Mm -hmm. So. I I, I literally asked him, I said, look, look, what is the wholesale fee? He's like, yeah. well, I don't want to walk away with 20 grand, and I'm trying to wholesale the deal to this back-end investor for 20 grand. I said, well, look, let's just go ahead and split the profit 50-50. And then yeah. I, 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 you don't have to worry about anything. I go ahead and walk through the whole transaction. Yeah. You get your check at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. he, uh, so he was like, uh, uh, well, uh, 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 let me call you back. So I had already knew that he's not – He's not calling me back at all. I, I right. Know. So yeah, yeah. Like and 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 this is this is uh this is another thing. Um, when you're when you're wholesaling, when you're doing an assignment, guys, uh, you can it's it's pretty much just shuffling paperwork on a lot of these yeah. deals, you yeah. know. So so the main part is, and like Lonzi said, you know, this this one wholesaler got the property tied up and has had it tied up for a long time, and then wanted to turn it into a subject too, but yeah. didn't have the right paperwork. So it is important. I'm gonna say this again and again and again. Yeah. Our contracts, our contracts are the most important thing that we yeah. have. Very. The most important. Yes, we must know our contracts front and back. And then also we have to make sure that our contracts are bulletproof. You know, yes. uh, yeah, they have to be they have to be bulletproof. And it's hard to get this paperwork, um, uh, for, especially for subject two deals and creative financing. Well, not really yeah. creative financing, but subject two. It's, it's hard to get this paperwork because lawyers don't have it. A lot of realtors don't know about it. You know, so no. you have to get it. Yeah, you have to get it in the industry. So you want to get it from a person that's actually doing this. And I'll say this, if it's free, guys, you don't want it. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. You, you don't want it because it, it's going to, it's going to mess you up in the end. You know, it's going to mess you up in the end. But so let's talk about this. Um, well, let's give the viewers something they can actually, you know, some meat. I like to give you guys some actionable uh, knowledge where you can actually go out and close these transactions. All right. So I prefer, um, I prefer to do, you know, subject twos and creative financing. I, I wholesale very, very seldom, very seldom. Um, but I was going to wholesale a subject two contract. Okay. So when you're, when we're negotiating, we have to go into it with our minds open. We cannot go into it and saying, okay, this, I'm going to wholesale this deal, or I'm, I'm going to subject to this right. deal. Right. You know, you, yeah, you can't do that because then you box yourself in. So you've got to go into it. Um, I, I, I liken it to, uh, almost a two-year-old when you're asking questions because you don't yeah. know. Yeah, you don't know. And, and if you think uh, of a two-year-old, they're, they're, they always, what is this? How, how do you do that? You know, so you want to go into it with that mindset um, and you're asking those questions, uh, you know, then you think that'll give you, that'll let you figure out what deal, what type of transaction this is, 
yeah. you know, when you're asking these questions. This is how you figure out what the problem is, what the pain point is, and then you are the solution, okay? So when you take over a property uh, subject to, my advice, my advice on that is you must got the kids today, Lonzy. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, Don't that's cool. Them that's what it's about. Background. It's, it's oh, cool. I ain't tripping. My daughter's going to be yeah. coming on the door here in a few. So, yeah, that's what it is, man. We do this yeah. for the family, bro. We do it for the family. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I really do. Yeah. Oh, uh, your but daughter's beautiful. It's the good thing about entrepreneurship, right? So we at home. We yeah, at, at home. The crib. Home. At, the, at the crib. Yeah, at the crib. It's all good. Yeah, we're all It's all good. So, so when, guys, when we take over a property subject to, um, what happens is, if it's like one of our first deals, we are so hungry to get a deal that we'll end up overpaying for this deal or over offering, I should say. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. There she goes. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna door. So we end up we end up over offering for this deal and then it makes it harder for us on our exit strategy. Hi. <laughs> it makes it harder for hi. It makes it harder for us on our exit strategy. Okay. So you've got to look at the property and understand what your exit strategy is first. Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. A lot of wholesalers, like, they only got one exit strategy, a cash right. buyer. Mm -hmm. so, so we have the flexibility of dealing with a cash buyer, mm -hmm. a retail buyer, mm -hmm. a, um, a, a real estate agent. Like, we can dispose this property off when we assign this, uh, like, assigning this deal. Like, it's so easy because yeah. I mean, we have not just only just one, one option to get rid of mm -hmm. the property. So mm -hmm. We got different, than our yeah, our buyers is way different. Our buyers yes. are definitely way different. absolutely, absolutely. So when we're when we're taking a property over uh, subject two, right? Nine times out of ten, if you're taking that, you're taking that debt over, you're taking over that existing mortgage. You want to um, they're 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 in some sort of tight situation. They're in a pickle. Um, so offer when you make your offer, understand that you're going to be assigning that assigning that contract. And that they're in a tough situation, so you don't have to give them the world initially. All right. So if you offer offer them some money to walk, a couple thousand dollars, make sure you're leaving yourself some room to assign that when you're assigning that contract. Because if you if that property has some equity in it, that 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 just makes your yeah that just makes your assignment uh, fee larger. Yes. You know. It yes. Makes your assignment fee larger. So just understand that going in, guys. I think that is a huge piece of advice is not to over offer right. on that first property. Right, right. And what I typically do to not over offer on, on, on that property, right? I look at the so these are the numbers that I actually evaluate a property, right? Okay. Market value. I check off the pictures to see um to probably like just assess the damages. And then I, I, I normally try to offer them. So I took the market value minus the repairs and try to offer them about 85% of the market value. So That's if the market good. is 100 grand, I'm, I'm, my offer is going to be automatically 85%. So 85,000 minus is going. And, and, we, and guys, look, listen, we're not going into these properties looking at these deals like, oh, we got to go in here and blow out the kitchen, blow out the bathroom. No, we're not doing that. These are nope. <laughs> cosmetics, like literally. And when I mean cosmetics, you are going in here, you painting. You probably uh -huh. find a new floor, probably change some doors out. You want to make this probably look rent ready. That's it. Uh -huh. There's uh -huh. nothing else. So I normally go in with the 85% of the market value minus the repairs, and then that gives me um, that that value, right? So, if the, so then now I can make an offer in it. 75 80 grand or whatever um and then i can turn around and outbeat most of these wholesalers right because the wholesalers like they got to uh -huh. come in five seventy percent minus repairs so they coming in and <laughs> literally at um half the value and sometimes, yeah, half. sometimes like that can rub a, a a homeowner the wrong way right yeah. so they're looking at a property that they picked up the homeowner um, got the property at 100 grand, and the wholesalers coming in at 65 percent. They offered them 65 grand, and then minus the repairs on top of that. So you look at another right. about 15 grand. Mm -hmm. So a homeowner gonna automatically tell you no. Yeah, they feel disrespected. That, that wholesaler, like they typically, they move on like to the property. Okay, move on to the next. Like I gotta know, I'm moving on like to the next deal. But mm -hmm. what happens is. You miss out on so much money on that property because not only yes. that you can still pick that property up doing the subject to deal mm -hmm. and turn around and on the back end of that deal, like you can do at least option strategy and get 20, 30 grand on that same property. 
So when you were mm -hmm. signing that property over, they bring you a deposit up front, right? This is yes. not refundable. Like this is not right. Not and, and and typically they hold. Uh, typically they deposit up front is bigger than the, your actually wholesale deal that you was thinking about wholesale. Right, the amount that you're gonna make. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is 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 vital if you are out there wholesaling, right? If you out there doing any type of um, real estate industry, whether you wholesaling, you doing fix and flips, creative financing will always trump all of that because you have not only that you are leveraging somebody uh, else's credit, but you are yes. controlling that property to make yes. you a, a bigger profit. Absolutely. So always look at. Don't always just go into. Um, a property with one strategy, like because once you go in with one strategy, oh, I'm just gonna wholesale it. I'm gonna just fix and flip it. I can guarantee you that you are leaving money on the table. You Man, a ton of it, a ton of yeah. it. And this is this is the thing too. Now I just put up a post on my IG, okay, um, a check a check that I have for twenty thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I still own that property. <laughs> I yeah. own that property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's all. I own that property. Then I just deposited twenty thousand dollars in my bank account, and this is how that this is how that went. Okay, um, so I want you guys to understand this because if you're a wholesaler, mm -hmm. um, I'm asking you, please open up your mind to yeah. creative financing and subject to because yeah. you are leaving a ton of money on the table, a ton. So I took this property over subject to right. So I took over the existing debt on this property and. Yeah. My exit strategy on that, I like to lease option, okay? But yeah, this particular property, it I but I don't do fix and flips, guys. I, you know, I just don't because I don't like to uh, depend on my contractor and then they sell me a dream and I'm I got my money tied up with them and yeah, you know, it's just a no. And I'm not saying fix and flips are bad. I'm just saying I don't do them at this point. Right. Now, I will in the future, but um. So anyway, this property it needed a lot of updating. It needed a lot of updating. Um, it needed some. It needed some work too. It needs new siding and some other things. So it would have been hard to lease option that. Um, well, it, it would have been hard to lease option it to a, like a family that wanted to move in it, move in there. You know, because it needed so much work. And yeah. I buy as is, and then I sell as is as well. Yeah. So what I what I did was this, guys. And this is a good tip, especially even if you're a wholesaler too. Um. I, I went out and I got in touch with uh, contractors yeah. be, because contractors, they have a hard time getting um, traditional mortgages because their income is so yeah. hit, it's hit or miss. And they may, they got money, you know, yeah. they've got money, but it's just hard for them to prove that to a bank, to a lending institution, right? So it's hard for them to get a loan to become an investor. So I reached out to contractors, but then what, what I, what I also did was I went down and got the section eight um, um, landlord list. Okay. From, yeah, that thing oh. right there, boy. Now hey, you can use that cool. is man. Hey. What? <laughs> hey, I just gave y'all a gem too. You go get that thing, right? Yeah. And now, 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 you know the people that are landlords. Yeah. That are in that are investors. Yeah. So so now you've got an instant buyers list. Instant. Instant, instant buyers list right yeah. there, man. It, it's beautiful. So what happened was, um, I ended up reaching out to one of those uh one of those landlords. Yeah. And. And uh, he wanted the property. He wanted the property. You know, he wanted something that he could fix. And his thing was this. Now, see, I bought it on terms, right, with subject yeah. to. Okay. I'm taking over the existing debt. This is beautiful. I love it, man, because yeah. I, I didn't go into a bank. I didn't have to apply for credit or anything, man, because yeah. I became the bank. Yeah, they already qualified for that debt, right, oh. that my seller did. They already qualified. So I didn't have to go fill out a credit application, show W-2s, nothing. So then, right, my buyer... He didn't want to pay the entire chunk up front. And I don't know if he could or he couldn't pay it, right? He didn't want to. So I said, well, hey, listen, I, you know, I own this property. Right. I own it. So we right. don't go to banks. I don't do credit checks, man. You know, don't even worry about that. As long as you can make this $20,000 down payment and then make the monthly payments, we do I'll it. be your, yeah, I'll be your bank. Yeah. 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 I'm your bank. Yeah. So, so that's exactly what I did. He is an investor. He owns three other houses that he rents out. So okay. he gave me he gave me twenty thousand dollars to yep. deposit in my bank account, and now he owns this house. What I did was though I sold it to him on an installment land contract. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yep. an installment land contract. So so he pretty much is on public record now too. See a yep. lease option a lease option. Um, I don't file those with the recorder's office, so they're no. not on public record when you look no. up the property, right? No. So with this though, when you look up the property, it shows it, was, it shows yeah it shows my trust is yep. the deed holder. 
right? Yeah. And then and then it has the contract uh, contract holder. Yeah. Uh, so so it has that. Yeah, it has that person as the contract holder on public record. Yeah. So, so so selling it with them those installment land contracts. What happened? What it did was it made it so he could take his money that he had twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, buy this house, and mm-hmm. then use the the extra money that he has to fix this house up. Yeah. And, and do what he wants to do with it on the back end, which is rent it out. Um. So he's fixing it up to make it rent ready. But yeah. he didn't have to go to a bank and apply for credit and, um, you know, go through all of that, jump through all of those hoops. He just came to me and I was able to do this. And guys, I didn't spend any money, right. not one <laughs> cent out of my right. own pocket, not one penny, man. Um, I mean, there's ancillary costs, I guess, if you add in gas going back and forth yeah. or, you know, all of that stuff. But I mean, you know, that's I mean, we spend that on coffee every you know what I mean? So um, so this is the power of that. Right. This is the power of it. I took over somebody else's debt. I didn't have to qualify for it. I didn't have to fill out an application. Then then I did what banks do. I created more debt. Yeah. Yeah. I created more debt because now this now my buyer is in debt to me. Yeah. Okay. And I'm about to go pick up my first check from him today. Uh, for that property. And so I get monthly <laughs> passive income off of this. Look at Lonzi yeah. smiling because yeah. he knows. Yeah. Lonzi knows, man. This is yeah. the best investment strategy that you can get. So so I, I said all that to say um, using these tactics it is powerful and it's liberating, guys. Uh, one more thing, too, before I turn it over to Lonzi. I put on my Instagram um, the before pictures where I brought my daughter over there to show her the house. There before the little before video, and then yeah. it transitioned into the after, into an after where it's all fixed up, it's all painted and stuff like that. Well, guess what, guys? I didn't do any of that work. I didn't spend any money for it. It was my buyer that is doing that. So yeah. if if he doesn't exercise his option to buy in five years when we set it for, yeah. I'll end up getting that property back fixed and, up. And the repairs is done. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. And I've made money. I've made that 20,000 and I've made my monthly and I've made my monthly uh, cash flow off of it. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. So it's pretty much. Um, yeah. That's to me. That's that's a signing as well. You know, it's a sign. It's just not technically, you know, yeah. it's just not technically because I still own that thing. Right. Yeah, I still own it, you know, but right. this is this is what this is what we can do, you know, and in my contract, though, if I want to assign this anytime throughout, I can and I can and I can charge for it. So I've already made that 20 grand down payment. I'm making the monthly cash flow. If I say, hey, you know what, Lonzi, I've got a property down here in Iowa you probably love. Just go ahead and give me five grand and you take over the monthly payments. Now I got another $5,000 check and Lonzi's got an asset. Most definitely. So, 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 so just a little bit of rewind, right? So um, the natural fix and flip people or the investors who wholesale, right? They normally get a five to $10,000 check, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. In order to get that 20 grand check, they have to close four deals. Like, like, do you understand? Like that's like, that's that tough. And that's in a month. So that means that they have to already have this locked up 30 days ago. Right. Yep. Um, and you just did, and you made that one transaction of 20 grand just in that one month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody who has to do a fix and flip, who go, who go, who's like, who's yep. going there to do a higher money loan, put down ten percent, uh, um, to do the whole renovation to this property. They not getting a check until four or five months, maybe even six months later. Right. Seriously, to get them a thirty grand or forty grand, like whatever the case may be, right? Mm-hmm. So that so so it's going to tell you that if you like if you was to close twenty thousand dollars every month for the next six months, right? That not only like did you triple what I, uh, a fix and flip person is going to make, yeah, you go out beat uh, anybody who's I mean like you're not working as hard as a wholesaler, right? Because a right. wholesaler they only getting a five grand check or a ten grand check. Yep. Um, very seldomly look like they close in a twenty or thirty thousand dollar check. Very yeah. seldom. That's hitting the lottery. Uh, but I can honestly say, in this market here, uh, if you are wholesaling, because literally, like we still wholesale as well. If you are wholesaling, this is what you need to be doing. Instead of wholesaling, you need to be wholesaling, right? And what I mean by that is, I mean you need to lock up that deal, and you need to turn around. You need to sell that to a retail buyer. Now I just right. did the same thing. Um, to a property that I was going to, su- I mean, I, yeah, I was going to pick up on subject two terms, but but it was just a two bedroom, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't want it because I normally pick up three bedrooms or four bedrooms, right? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I want the property. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I end up doing, I end up locking the property up for forty six thousand. Now thirty six of that was going to pay off the existing mortgage. Mm -hmm. Ten grand was going to have that for the homeowner to walk away. Mm -hmm. I turned around, got the property um, under contract the next day. Uh, my buyer ended up picking it up for ninety grand. Woo! <laughs> right. So the, the assignment fee is like forty five, forty four thousand dollars. Mm. But the market value was one hundred four. <clears throat> right. So not only did the buyer win because he got fourteen thousand dollars worth of equity. Mm -hmm. The seller won because she walking away with ten grand. Uh, I got a phone call, right? So, oh, okay, okay, okay. Buyer, yeah, like so. Uh, so again, the, so the not buyer a, walked buyer, away. Yeah, the buyer walked away with ten grand. That's where you was at. Yeah. So the, okay. So the buyer he ended up winning because he got fourteen thousand dollars worth of equity. Oh yeah. For the seller she ended up walking away with ten grand. Her mm -hmm. mortgage of thirty six thousand was paid away, and I ended up walking away with the difference. So when Ooh, you, what was that difference again? No, hold on. You just said that nonchalant. I like that nonchalant. <laughs> so the difference is about about forty four, forty five grand. Like right now, Man. we are um at the at the last end of the stages. Like we did get the property appraised, and that's when they came back at one hundred four. Um, okay. Now, so we at the. I mean, like we're literally about to get the clear to close sometime this week, where we all about to close on the property and everybody about to walk away. But. To say this, like you have to go into every deal knowing, like, okay, how can I get rid of this property, and what's the maximized dollar yes. for the property? Because a lot yes. of times wholesalers only want to make five, ten grand because they sell it to fix and flip people. Mm -hmm. they, the retail buyers is retail mm -hmm. out there as of right now who's getting approved and they have money. Like mm -hmm. there's not enough properties on the market right, right. now to right. um to offset that right because it's mm -hmm. market so mm -hmm. what you need to do like you really need to go out there you need to wholesale if you wholesale it go find you a good real estate agent on your team because yes. that real estate agent gonna want to get paid his or her percentage who, who cares when you get right. a three grand check i don't care about yes. a three percent three percent yes, free money um a ninety thousand dollar uh deal i don't care yeah it's Pay free money percent. yeah it's free so get you a good agent on your team wholesale that deal call that agent and say hey i got this property one two three Main Street, um, um, under contract. Well, well, well. I'm going to sell that property for ninety thousand. They don't need to know like that. You got it under contract for forty five. I mean, for for forty six thousand dollars. So it you, don't matter, yeah. But you got to maximize the dollar amount, and then put the rest absolutely. back into marketing. Absolutely, absolutely. And can, man, that is amazing, man. Yeah, forty four thousand um, dollars yeah. on that deal. And then also, let me say this too for your seller. Not only did they walk away with ten grand. They yeah. avoided they avoided a foreclosure on their Most on definitely. their credit. Most definitely. On their credit. And that can be I mean, that is catastrophic. Yeah, it is. It is catastrophic it to a person um personally, their personal finances. And then when they try to get another home, man, they gotta wait seven to ten years, you know? So everybody won. You yeah. Know, I, yeah. Everybody I, I, won. It, it's beautiful. I don't like to use the term um it's a win win situation, but hell, it, it was a win for the for the buyer. It was yeah. a win. For the seller, and yeah. then it was a win for you and your family. That was yeah. a win, win, win. You know. So for those of us that are just uh, joining us, joining us, this is the Creative Financing Academy. Uh, I'm on here with my man, Lonnie man. Rattler, <laughs> Champion Real Estate Institute up there in Flint, Michigan. Man, he's up there making man making big moves, making big moves, and um doing a lot of things, doing a lot of positive things, helping to educate people, man. So you know, this is what we can do. My name's Gene Boykin. I'm with the Go Getter family, um and and you know I'm down here in Iowa. In, in Sioux yeah. City, Iowa. Yeah, in Sioux City, Iowa. So if I'm here, yeah, if I'm here in the middle of nowhere getting $20,000 checks, man, about to come in the bank, you can do it too. You can. You can do it too. And I, I had to say, I wanted to say this story real quick because, see, I don't know. I don't know if people, you know, if you're like me growing up, um, I always thought, you know, real estate, man, real estate, because yeah. uh, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a lot of options, grew up rough or whatever. Uh, but, you know, you always hear, you know, things about real estate, you know, and everybody knows that you can build wealth off of real estate and right. um, buy, buy land because God isn't making any more of it or, uh, you know, value, real estate always goes up and never goes down. Just all these things. So we think this in our mind, you know, hey, I can become an agent or um, I can become an investor or something like that. And so what we do, though, is we begin, we get caught and trapped in that traditional way 
that they, yeah. that they put out there to us. They yes. put this out there to us. Yeah, they put it out there to us, man, and they advertise it, and they do that purposely, y'all. Yeah. They do this on purpose yeah. because they want you to stay in this lane of the traditional way of doing real estate, yes. which is, yeah, which is uh, uh, borrowing money from a bank, you know, 20% down, making sure you do do this and don't do that for your credit so that it's right. Um, mm -hmm. Using a realtor, inspector, appraiser, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And it's not it's not necessary. Now, I've got a coaching student in, uh, in um, Maryland. She's in Maryland. She's right there in the DMV. So anyway, she uh, before she started working with me, she uh, got into a deal to buy this house. Mm -hmm. And um, so as soon as she told me, I'm like, man, she bought the clothes, you know, and get that debt on her name. I'm like, well, if your contract, you know, if you're locked in by contract, you're going to have to do it, but I'll help you on the exit strategy. So you at least make some money, you know? Well, so I look up the property, right. And, uh, man, don't, you know, a hard, uh, an investor bought it and they're, they're selling it to her. Well, they got a loan from a hard money lender, uh, -huh. for, uh 200 and, um, 250,000. They got the loan for 258,000. Their monthly payments on this loan. It's a 12 month loan is 22, thousand dollars okay what? 22 yes twenty two thousand a month i looked it up on prop stream man i was like oh my god right but check this out what makes it even worse is this they um they bought it as a fix and flip okay oh. the, the investment company did it. so everything in there is like new it's updated or whatever well here comes the inspection right because it's a traditional uh it's a traditional transaction so they got an inspector for the loan you know right. um so they find out that the septic tank underground is destroyed. Okay. Wow. The fifteen, twenty thousand dollar hit. Thirty. Thirty. Ooh. Because because check this out. So that is Ooh. now that now gets the city and the county involved. Involved. Right? Because yeah, because that is a public utility. Okay. Yep. So so what happened was the uh the county came out there and they said, Hey, you can't put another sec septic tank uh underground. You've got to have an above ground septic tank that mm -hmm. you have to pump. Yes. I'm like okay, that's gonna make it way harder to sell yeah. now. Uh, so, so you gotta have an above ground septic tank, and it's thirty grand. So now these people that have bought that house as an investment, they have owned that house, man. God, how long have they owned it for? Like seven months, and then, yeah, bro, at twenty two thousand dollars a month, and then when you when you sell it traditionally, you get an offer. You gotta take that house off of the market for at least thirty days. It's yeah. usually forty five days. Yeah. That you're off the market, and then if that offer does, if that offer falls through, and you've taken that property off the market for 45 days, that was another 22 grand that they spent. So, yeah. so, um, yeah, so they're they're working on the agreement now, like that they, that the seller, that investor, that with that monthly payment, they have to agree to fix that septic tank before you know they'll close the transaction. So I told her this. I was like, you know what? This is why I don't do fix and flips. <laughs> And, yeah, that is the main reason why right? I don't do fix and flip because of unknown things, man. You look yeah. at this property and like, okay, oh, it just needs some updating. You know, it's old. It's retro. We just need to update it. But then you get to open this stuff up and boom, there's 30 grand. So so that's one reason. And then the, uh, another another reason why I do what I do is they had to go borrow this money from a hard money lender. Yeah, they borrowed that money yeah. from a hard money lender and yeah. their monthly payment is 22 grand a month, that's a month. That's their holding cost now with a hard money lender. Your interest rate is much higher. It is much higher. Yeah. So you're yeah, you're paying all of this interest, man. And um, and it's a short, it's a short term loan. But now, now you've got this hard money lender that's breathing down your neck because yeah. they want their money or that investment property is used as collateral. So once you've done all that fixing and uh, fixing it up and all that stuff, if you don't if you default on that loan, they come in, they take that now. Now that's theirs, you know. Uh so this man. is this is why, guys. Terrible. So I would say if I was that investor, yeah, um, talk to me. I came from the fix and flip. I mean, I was all about just nothing but fix and flip. New, never, knew are, about, yeah. never knew nothing about wholesaling, nothing about creative financing, right? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. what I was just doing was buying property, flipping. But what I would tell that investor who's who's got that twenty two thousand dollar loan, oh my god, every month that's mm. that's mm -hmm. hey, that's terrible. What they mm -hmm. need to do right as of right now is I would say refinance and 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 and, and get that lender off. That, I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that twenty two grand is is definitely terrible. But, I, but on the on the refinance though, don't they only refinance at seventy thirty? Well, some companies they do seventy thirty. Some companies they rare. I got one person who do eighty twenty. Okay. 
score got to be a, extreme. I, I think it got to be about a 740, 750 in order for mm. him to do the 80-20. But most okay. people do 70-30. Yeah. But, of course, was, I mean, but your payment's going to be drastically lower. smaller than 22,000. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. again, that's why a lot of out-of-state investors, like, they buy in these urban areas, which is Detroit, right, which is um Ohio, um, mm -hmm. PA, because – what it is is that um, the purchase price of these properties is drastically low. Yes. So that same two hundred fifty-eight thousand that he just spent out in Maryland, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they spent two two hundred fifty-eight thousand in this market. You're going to get probably about at least about four or five different homes that you can right. go flip. So that's mm -hmm. kind of out of state investors like they buy in these urban areas and they mm -hmm. go flip. But you buy in it somewhere in California, Nevada, mm -hmm. uh, Nevada like them. No way, because right. they, they purchase prices so high that, of course, like you got that twenty-two thousand dollar monthly carry that you got to carry every month. To yeah, property up. I right. would invest in them areas. Like no way. Right. I mean, see, on the subject two deal. Now, right. see, that's what I was gonna property? say. Property. Yeah. That's, yeah, I do that all day. That's what I was gonna say, man. That that investor that borrowed that money from a hard money lender, the yeah. payments that high one because it's a twelve month loan. Yeah, it's a, it's a twelve month, so it's super duper high. Um, but see, this is what I would have did, and I wanna I wanna touch back on the assignments, right? And I, I talked to Lindsay today, and I said, you know what? Let's talk about assignments. And he was like, wholesaling, wholesaling assignments. Right. And I was like, yeah, kind of, you know. But well, because I Lindsay isn't a wholesaler, I'm not a wholesaler, right. you know. So it's kind of hard for me. To, to talk about, you know, wholesaling and stuff like that. But an assignment, this is what I would have done in that situation. See, I would have never borrowed that money from a hard money. No. I would have, I would have done my research. I would have done my research because it's all public record. Yeah. It's all public record. I would have found out how much is owed on that property, right? The, the debt, the existing debt on yeah. that property. Then, yeah. then as a poll, instead of going to borrow this money and personally guaranteeing $258,000 in debt with a monthly service servicing of $22,000, I would have simply took over that existing debt and the existing uh, uh, payment on yeah. that. Right. And then if I had to pay the seller, right, if I had to pay them out, you know, to walk, that's fine. Here's five grand, here's 10 grand to walk. And then now I've just got this $1,200 a month payment and I own this property. Jeez. And then what I would have done because they did a full update on this property, a full uh, um, remodel, um, yep. because everything needed updated. So then what, what I would have done is now I've got this property, uh, mm -hmm. got the, I, I own it, I would have assigned that contract because I'm not doing a fix and flip. I'm not fixing that thing no. up to find that, to find that destroyed septic tank. Yeah, that ain't going to be me, right? So I would have just assigned a contract. This is where the assignment comes in. But we now own this property just like yeah. almost like a wholesaler when they go in and they act like they're a cash buyer, yeah. you know, and they're getting this property under contract and we're going to give you this much for it and they're not going to give you nothing, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. we are actually going to give you something. We are actually the buyer and yeah. we're going to take ownership of this. We're just doing it in a way that makes sense Correct. for everybody. Correct. Correct. And it also protects you as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Because now when you close on that property, you are the owner. Right. Mm -hmm. so you can go ahead. Like, like you say, like you can go rent that property out. You can assign that property over to a contractor, right? Who's mm -hmm. going to the property and go find the septic tank and be like, oh, this is bad, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And you're still making that monthly cash flow. Like, you're still yeah. going to make down payment. You're still going to make yep. that monthly cash flow. Um, but you but, but you are not taking um, ownership of that debt. Like, that debt is still going to be with the seller. Like, right. I'm taking out a credit, right? I'm not going to go going to go, going to go to the bank to go get my credit ran and um, – yeah ways to improve my credit no it's not none of that like there's no nope. credit checks um at all so you just have to just find someone who's willing um to let you take over ownership of the property who's going to let you own the property right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that is still going to stay with them right so yes. that's the whole thing about creative financing is literally finding different ways to own property and to yep. make money as you control that property control yep. I'm telling you, control that property and you're going to make the money. Like the money's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll say, I'll say this. Um, when I do these with like a subject two, we've got to get power of attorney. Okay. Yes. And when I first heard that, when I first heard that, when I discovered this strategy, I was like, yeah. oh man, here goes another one I can't do. Because you know? <laughs> so, who, who's going to give me power of attorney? You're right. right? This is what I'm thinking. This is what I thought. And um, then I saw my, my mentor, who is now my mentor. I saw his video, which was the next video. And the way he explained it, yeah. I was like, 
yes, I yeah. can do this because it is just, it's a limited power of attorney. Yeah. Okay. It's a limited power of attorney that yeah. pertains particularly to that property, yeah. to that property. Yeah. And they have different powers of attorney just legally. Yeah. They have a, uh, an all encompassing power of attorney. And then they have one for properties, a limited yeah. power of attorney. That's what it's called. Yeah. So um, guys, I get limited power of attorney on damn near every transaction I do, even if it's not a subject to yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. I won't control like, and, I, yes. and then like how, how even like, seriously, even if it's my subject to deal and I just, and I just like, I feel like, that the seller is, is 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 a little shaky. I always tell them like, hey, mm -hmm. um, we still got. All, I mean, like, we still got additional paperwork that we still need to sign. Get that notarized, and then I am in control. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Because like, one thing that you don't want is something to blow up because of emotions. Like you don't want it to right. be just a transaction. So yeah. of course, um, if if y'all are not getting limited power of attorney, y'all need to definitely hook up with both of us. Yeah. Um, got some documentation, right? Like so we got yeah. the. So you can control the property. Once you control it, the money will come. I yeah. always will tell you guys that, like, literally, once you control that property and you got ownership of that property, the money will come. The yes. money the money will absolutely come. And um, like Lonzi said, you know, he and I both have the uh, paperwork yeah. that, has been, that has been through the fire. It's been yeah. through the gauntlet. So yeah. it is it is tested, man. I put up a video, man, where a lawyer didn't want to let me sign for a forfeiture for my seller. Uh, yeah. Forfeiture is the same thing as same thing as a foreclosure, but this is on a contract buy. He didn't want to let me uh, sign with my limited power of attorney. So I had to bring my seller down, which I did that. And I'm like, what? So I brought it to another attorney. And he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you can do that. I think John was just being a little overly cautious and this and that. So having this control, guys, because, you know, lawyers, you know, they can interpret things the way they want to interpret them, yeah. you know. And people get emotional, you yeah. know, so we, we must have this control. Um, but guys, I got to get up out of here. I actually got to meet somebody. And I'll tell you this real quick, a tip, guys. This, yeah. is a tip. this is a great <laughs> tip, too, especially if you're just starting out, okay? When you go um, and you get a uh, property under contract, yeah. um, we always get the documents notarized. Every, I get every document notarized. Oh. But, but what I do is I bring them to my bank uh -huh. to get those documents notarized because okay. the manager of that bank is a notary. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you go in there and I call them ahead of time, call my yeah. bank. Hey, hey, Patty, it's Gene. You know, I'm coming down to bother you again. You know, I got to get, you know, yeah. you get to smooth them up or whatever. But when you're coming into your a bank and you're meeting these people at your bank, yeah. it just makes it look like, OK, this guy is, is doing things. Yeah. And he knows the manager. Yeah. And she and she's notarizing his documents, you know, without a question, you know, so this guy's legit. You know what I mean? So I always do that. Now, today, I've already done that with this person, but today we got to notarize another document. I'm just meeting them at UPS real quick because my bank's yeah. closed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so one thing about me, uh, right before you get up out of here, like, no, you good. close the deal, right, <laughs> at a funeral home. My, Ooh, you a bad boy. My notary lady, she works at a funeral home, right? She's the, uh, seriously, so we went to her office. Um, the son was, oh. uh, the seller was lost because I told him, hey, meet me at this funeral home. He like, are you are you buying a funeral home? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Are you, is, are you at a funeral? Like, what yeah. <laughs> so I, told, I said, no, my notary lady, like, she's inside. She works on the inside. And I got the whole thing documented and everything uh, on film. So it was good. Uh, uh, we got everything notarized. So it, was, mm -hmm. so it was just an experience that you don't have to always be at a title company or you don't have to be. Like, you can do this stuff. At Walmart, like you can be yeah, at Walmart, literally. Get paper, I mean, paper notary, long as that the notary person is there and the seller, mm -hmm. you can do it at, anywhere you want to. Um, Absolutely. So, so y'all, so listen, don't be afraid to get out there, meet people in the industry, ask questions, and get a mentor. Mm -hmm. That's it. You, you've got, yeah, you've got to get a mentor. I yeah. actually see one of my new students on here. I'm going to be having my first session with on on Monday. Max, <laughs> I see you, buddy. And hey, Max. I'm going to UPS to get these documents notarized. Yeah. And I'm about to email you these documents, brother. There you go. To get you to dive in, <laughs> man. Dive. You've got to have a mentor, man. Somebody that is doing this business. Somebody yeah. that has been through it and has walked that gauntlet before you so that um, so that you can avoid some of those lumps on the head, man. Because yeah. some of these lumps that you get, well, some people would just be like, oh, no, see this? I can't do it. And then you quit. Yeah. <laughs> then you quit when you're when you're when you're three inches away from striking gold. Right there. Right there, you right. You can see it. You can see. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, I gotta get on up out of here. Hey, I got a free um assignment letter that I give that I give on my um. It's on my YouTube. I'll I'll send Lonzy the uh the link 
so that he can put it in the description for you guys. Um, it's not a full contract. It's just your assignment. So, we, yeah. you know, you have your purchase and sales agreement. And yeah. then when you assign it, that's what you use. OK. And I don't know if a lot of people, you know, have that or, or uh, provide that or not. But, guys, you can assign anything with this letter, too. Anything. So, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You got any last words for him, Lonzi? Man, all, all I can say is um, y'all out there who's who's closing deals, whether that you wholesale, you do a fix and flip, whether you're doing creative finance, to so keep going. And if you get stuck, man, reach out to people that's in the industry, right? Ask questions. Mm -hmm. And don't just try to ask questions that always pick people's brain. Pay somebody for their time, right? Pay them. Pay, 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 pay them for a consultation fee. Pay them yep. people for that consultation fee because that consultation fee might be the key to unlock the doors that you need to go through. So yep. definitely find somebody in the marketplace to keep going, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, um, don't forget to um, hit that like button. Definitely. Um, follow follow Lonzi on Instagram, man. He got a lot of good stuff on there. Follow him. Um, and then you can follow me at the Go-Getter family. And um, yeah, put some drop some fire emojis in the comments to get us in the algorithm so other people can see this, guys. And we do appreciate you um, tuning in this morning, this afternoon. So yeah, it's, yeah beautiful thing, man. All right. A, all right. Till next, till next time. Let's get All right. Lonzi, I'm going to hit you up later, too. Okay, bro. All right. All right. Later. Okay.